Good day, everyone. I am recording this uh, lecture video as a reference for our first lesson of the last coverage that we are going to have before our final examination. And that is the development of creativity. So in connection with our discussion on speech and speech arts, let us now talk about the different or the history of theater and how it developed over time, especially with the different changes that has happened in our social and civic lives or social and civic developments over the past centuries and uh, decades. So firstly, let us first discuss what is drama. Drama is a performing art. It is an outlet for self-expression and a way of learning. Drama is an effective learning tool because it involves the student intellectually, physically, socially, and emotionally. These include activities wherein we have improvisation, add to mind, playmaking, and scene reenactment that serve to develop the creative potential in the participants and to help them develop critical thinking skills. So that's basically drama in a nutshell. Now, why is it important that we teach drama? As, I, as what is or what was already discussed, drama is a teaching tool that allows students to participate, demonstrate, and observe in a quote-unquote controlled or non-threatening environment. Therefore, it provides another non-traditional opportunity for students to learn and to demonstrate learning. At the same time, drama helps students get in touch with their creativity and spontaneity as well as to develop confidence in the expression of their own ideas. Finally, it teaches self discipline it also teaches acceptance and uh, acceptance for positive responses to criticism and cooperation with others. Because drama, as we all know, is a very strict discipline. A very strict discipline that entails students to participate and to invest really their time and their efforts in making sure that a particular piece is put together and is executed excellently. So now let us now go to the history of the development of theater. So we have here the following experience, uh, examples of uh, theater over the, over the times. No? So we have Playhouse, the Athenian theater, the medieval theater, the Elizabethan theater, the theater of modern and of realism, as well as the panoramic Playhouse. Now, speaking of the latter, let's talk what, or let's discuss what is a Playhouse. So the theater, which was opened in 1576, had a unique history as one of the first playhouses to portray Shakespeare's work. According to the Guardian, the playhouse was built by Burbage with money from his brother-in-law and was constructed on top of an old nunnery. Therefore, it was a historic because in, during those times, in the 1500s or 1576, uh, wala pakaayoy yung mga playhouses na, na established. Therefore, uh, dinig kayo yung anak kapatok, no? the dramatizations of um, Shakespearean works as well as how they are going to portray. So, they had like so good. Basically, these or during these times were the founding uh, or the foundation. So, what we all know now as stage arts or theater. Another is the Athenian theater. Of course, we all know that this originates from Greece. In ancient Greek drama, there was a theatrical culture that flourished, that flourished in ancient Greece from 600 BC. The city-state of Athens, which became a significant cultural, political, and military power during this period, was its center, where it was institutionalized as part of a festival called Genesia, which honored the god Genesius. Tragedy in the late 500 BC, comedy in the 490 BC, and the satire play were the three dramatic genres to emerge from this particular period. Athens exported the festival to its numerous colonies. Now, we now go to the medieval theater. So from the playhouses to the Athenian theaters, we now try to figure out how theater was developed during the medieval period. The medieval theater was a source of entertainment and education for residents of the Middle Ages. Though initially tinged with religious zeal, medieval theater went through centuries of evolution and themes outside of the Bible 
were eventually uh, created. Therefore, sa una, ang ginaportray lang yun sa medieval creators are those with religious inclinations. Ito mga stories lang sa Bible. However, eventually, ito mga themes that were not anymore found solely or centrally from the Bible or in the Bible were accommodated. Therefore, it continued to flourish for centuries and serve as an inspiration for Renaissance stage plays. Now, in connection to that class, in medieval theater, there are three, uh, there are uh, quick facts which include the following. First, the church played a large role in the development of medieval theater. As we have mentioned earlier, uh, more of the plays in the medieval theater had religious seals. So it had close inclinations to stories that were found in the Bible. The church did not welcome traveling entertainers, but medieval theater eventually accepted it. Medieval theater became more secular over time, or meaning to say non-sectarian over time. The medieval theater ended around the 16th century. And so, it ushered in Elizabethan theater. Elizabethan drama was the dominant art, art form that flourished during and a little after the reign of Elizabeth I, who was Queen of England from 1558 to 1603. She was uh, a very dominant queen, so therefore, na established ng mga Elizabethan theaters also because of the length of her reign. Before, drama consisted of simple morality plays and interludes, which were skits performed at the banquets of the queen's father, Henry VIII, or at public schools of Eton. The, the Elizabethan era saw the birth of plays that were far more morally complex, hence more vital and more diverse. Now, in connection with the Elizabethan theater, there were interludes. The earliest Elizabethan plays were put on for university students. They were modeled after the comedies of the Roman playwrights Plotus and Terence, as well as the tragedies of Seneca. The theater was open and plays had to be performed in daylight because open man ilang venue. We need to say, uh, atok, or atok, but the, the infrastructure was designed differently. A flag would be flown from the top of the theater to show that a play was going to be performed. People sat around the stage in galleries. Therefore, before the cheapest place, or even until now, the cheapest place was in front of the stage where ordinary people stood. Meanwhile, others like VIPs had to uh, had to be accommodated in galleries all over the infrastructure. And then came the theater of modern and of realism. The modern period and its drama were shaped by world-changing forces. What are these? Industrial technological revolution, democratic revolutions, and an intellectual revolution that would disrupt earlier conceptions of time, space, the divine, human psychology, and social order on and off. As a result, a theater of challenge and experimentation emerged. Mona siya ginatawag of modern period. Now, in realism, this is a movement with the most pervasive and long-lived effect on modern theater. This was conceived as a laboratory in which the ills of society, familiar problems, and the nature of relationships could be quote unquote objectively presented for the judgment and uh, for the judgment of impartial observers. So they are going to present close to uh, real life scenarios of different fields of society, problems of families, and the relationships in order for us, the considered impartial observers, to judge whatever they present them is right or is close to fictional. Its goal of likeliness to life demanded that settings resemble their prescribed locales precisely and seem like rooms from real life in which one wall has been removed. So the staging was going to be more complex because it needed to be more precise to the different settings that resemble the prescribed locales. Now, let's talk about Panoramic Playhouse. The panorama is a major scenic innovation. This was invented in 1787 and was first used on the London stage in 1792. The panorama was set up in a circular building in which the audience sitting on a central platform was totally surrounded by a continuous painting. Daguerre started his career as one of the first panorama painters. He went on to invent the diorama, 
in which the audience sat on a platform that revolved to show paintings on uh, proscenium-like stages. So that's a panoramic playhouse, more of the pictures or the paintings, the sceneries, in which they revolve the story of the stage play that was being presented. Now, let's talk about the different advantages of each playhouse or theater. Firstly, it gives the actor the feedback of the audiences, such as the applause, the laughter, or the breathless anticipation. The very limits of theater present challenges for both the artist's and the audience's imagination. So there must be a different dynamic or a dynamism where in artists and audience have to click with, especially in the presentation of the uh, stage play. And lastly, for students that find theater helpful, they develop that sense of confidence that is essential for that is essential to speaking clearly, lucidly, and thoughtfully because they are able also to immerse no, in different stage plays that will help them develop those kinds of essential skills. Now, since you presented the advantages, let's now also touch into the disadvantages of playhouses or theater. Firstly, live performances is not permanent. Therefore, it is gone as soon as it is delivered. So kasi nga, it is live. You perform it live. It uh, mistakes can't be fixed, such as in film, because in film there is of course the recording of the particular stage play or the performance. And since it is recorded in film, that can be edited some samakaron in our modern times because of the great tanabito, innovations of technology. You can simply edit natin ginatawag ng CGI, na natin ginatawag ng holographics, etc., etc. So, ma-edit yun mo kung unsa itong ma-record sa film. Compared sa live performance, yeah, the mistakes should be less to none. Kaya hindi naman true. Unless you wanted a mediocre performance. Therefore, uh, another disadvantage of playhouses or theater is that the audience are mere spectators. We need to say, passive lang ang imong audience. Mo na nga, di ni kayo interesting nowadays, especially sa our generation, to watch theater unless that you're really invested into the stage cards. So that is the development of theater as well as touching on the different aspects of the advantages as well as the disadvantages of uh, theater. So I hope that you were able to find this discussion helpful and I will be continuing with the discussions of theater as we go along with our topics. Thank you very much and I hope that you are able to find interest and new knowledge in our discussions through this lecture video.